Over a century, AGC has been an innovator in various industries. We've brought comfort to people's homes. Entertainment into their lives. And we've been helping people to get from place to place faster and safer. We have brought communities together with our products. We offer a wide range of materials such as glass, electronics, chemicals, and ceramics. And operate in over 30 countries and regions with over 50,000 employees, working to provide essential products for day-to-day -day life. Our research and development team thrives to achieve a better society and standard of living. At any point in time, AGC has played a part in supporting society, providing unique materials and solutions. Our glass is used in buildings and vehicles around the world. Our chemicals business offers a wide range from daily products such as baking soda to materials used for iconic buildings around the globe. Furthermore, providing solutions to advanced medical care and expected food shortage issues. Our display glass enables clearer images. By utilizing a wide range of technology, AGC contributes to the development of the electronics industry. By providing unique materials and solutions, AGC is always around you, supporting people's lives anywhere in the world. AGC, an everyday essential part of our world. Good morning. My name is Tsukasa Hirabayashi, the Chief Representative of AGC Group for Asia Pacific. This morning, I would like to share the sustainability journey of AGC. It is no doubt that sustainability is now front and at the focus of corporate strategy worldwide. There are a lot of global initiatives to accelerate corporate efforts toward the realization of a sustainable society. In AGC, environment is one of the four shared values of our group vision look beyond. So sustainability is one of the key aspects AGC is carefully looking into. As a material manufacturer, AGC's unique materials and solutions are being used in various applications in different market segments, making people's life better around the world every day. The close relationship between AGC materials and society, making AGC become an everybody essential part of the world, and it is our mission we adhere since the beginning. To realize our purpose and aspirations, AGC aims to grow through well-balanced creation of social value and economic value by providing differentiated materials and solutions for the betterment of the people and the environment. In order to achieve greater corporate value, the promotion of sustainability management coupled with business portfolio transformation is essential. Since its inception, 
World Green Building Council has been actively promoting the importance of green building and its impact. In 2016, the World Green Building Council launched its Advancing Net Zero Global Project, which envisions a goal of total built sector uh, decarbonization by 2050. As a regional partner, AGC supported the development and the formulation of the World Green Building Council Asia Pacific Network Embodied Carbon Primary Report and Net Zero Readiness Framework Workshop. Today's live session is a major step and a common platform for all of us to share and exchange knowledge and experience, collate best thinking and best practices. As I mentioned before, Environment is one of four agencies shared value. Promoting sustainability management is one of our management policies. For realizing a sustainable global environment, AGC has set a new goal of achieving net zero carbon by 2050. As milestones to monitor the progress, AGC aims for a greenhouse gas emission reduction rate of 30% and a rate of improvement in greenhouse gas emissions by unit of sales of 50% by 2030. AGC will continue to reduce greenhouse gas, though energy saving and energy creating products, also technology advancement. As part of its decarbonization efforts, AGC has, in, has introduced internal carbon pricing to drive low carbon investment. When making investment decisions, ICP is used to evaluate the profitability of projects by taking future carbon costs into account. The implementation of internal carbon pricing was introduced in European glass business since 2020. As of February 2022, full-fledged ICP implementation has been done as a group to accelerate our GHG reduction initiatives explained in the next two slides. To To achieve the net zero goal, AGC promote fuel conversion from heavy oil to natural gas uh, during glass manufacturing. To reduce dependence on fuel combustion in glass melting facilities. AGC also promoting the energy saving glass reduction technology by introducing energy efficient oxygen combustion methods and electric melting boosters that will lead to reduce fuel consumption in the grass melting processes. New cutting edge technology such as carbon free ammonia combustion is under study. We will also contribute to the realization of net zero carbon in the world by developing and producing high performance energy creating and energy saving glasses. This has long lasting efforts as the CO2 emitted at the time of manufacturing is offset tenfold due to the product's contribution to CO2 emissions reduction throughout its lifetime in the urban building environments. In the area of clean energy, AGC contributes to realize next generation of clear energy hydrogen by supplying high performance fluoroline based electrolyte polymers for fuel cell membranes without compromising its power generation and durability. Through its business activities, 
AGC will continue to create social value in the following five areas. Safe and comfortable infrastructure, safe and healthy lifestyles, healthy and secure society, fair and safe workplace, and lastly, sustainable global environment. I would like to highlight the realization of sustainable global environment is one of key areas AGC hopes to achieve by addressing climate change and effective use of resources. As a material manufacturer, AGC continues to pursue new product innovations that support sustainability and doing its best to contribute to carbon naturality journey. It is uh, still a long and challenging journey ahead, but as AGC founder said, never take the easy way out, but confront difficulties. With this corporate attitude, we will embrace the process. Your dreams are challenges. Finally, taking this opportunity, I would like to congratulate the World Green Building Council on its 20th year anniversary. AGC is happy to be part of the journey. Wishing you all the best in the coming years and a happy anniversary. Thank you very much. Hello everyone from World Green Building Council family. My name is Tai Li Xiang. I'm the past chair year 2016 to 2018. We started the Advancing Net Zero campaign in 2017 in response to COP meeting. And we were quite concerned about what happens to the world if we don't do something about our buildings in the light of global warming and climate change. Therefore, we came up with a campaign called Advancing Net Zero Campaign, calling all buildings, whether it's existing or new, to adopt net zero as an outcome. Today, in 2022, we have made progress. But the net zero world still leaves much work to be done because the design for net zero building is still far from satisfactory. There's a need to learn more. There's a need to gain more knowledge. And therefore, I wish to speak about design for a net zero world and what must we do. But let me first start by talking about why net zero and what must organizations rethink? What are some of the net zero processes that we need to put in place and what does net zero environment mean and certainly human plays an important part in this whole exercise therefore we must talk about net zero behavior finally we should think seriously about developing net zero map for every organizations on this earth so let me start by briefly talking about the world today. This needs no further introduction, as we know that the global temperature has risen to more than one degree Celsius in the past year. We are seeing record high temperatures in the year 2022, the year after the most serious part of COVID-19 pandemic. And we're seeing consecutive year where global temperature has been over one degree Celsius. And this unsurprisingly leads to many problems such as hotter temperatures, loss of species, more severe weather, loss of food production, more human diseases, and increased droughts, rising seawater challenge, poverty and displacement. 
Have we ever considered what happens if global warming reaches 3 degrees Celsius? Needless to say, this will bring catastrophes such as prolonged heat waves. But World Green Building has much to contribute because global warming is hitting right at the heart of human settlement. In the next few decades, we are likely to see more people living in cities, rising up to maybe 60 to 70 percent of global population. The other thing that is highly threatening is the fact that maybe more than 50 percent of global population are likely to live within 100 kilometers of coastline. So the rising seawater challenge will become a threat to all the settlements that are located very near to the coastline. So we, we have an urgent mission to bring net zero to the mainstream. At this point in time, let me just briefly talk about the net zero formula. This is not complicated. It is science-based and it is understood by many. It comprises of two important parts. One is about reduce emissions. One other part is about removing emissions. And it is about balancing between greenhouse gas produced and removed from the atmosphere. It sounds simple, but yet it is far from easy to achieve. There are many problems associated with both steps of reducing emissions and removing emissions. The problem lies in the fact that many businesses are still not ready because they don't know how to get to net zero and there's a lack of mainstream and practical solutions for businesses to embrace. The consolation we can take from this is at least there's a greater awareness of net zero today and there's willingness to at least learn about it. Is net zero even possible? If you have a chance to look at some of the data coming up from COVID-19 in the past two years, we have witnessed carbon cuts when human activities in cities grind to a halt. Overall, at the global level, we see a 6.4% drop of carbon emissions. Now, it looks very small in number, but I think it gives us hope. It tells us something that we can, if we collectively agree to do something about our activities on Earth, and we can bring the emissions down significantly. Next, I'm going to talk about what must organizations rethink? I'll submit to you that there are three things we need to rethink. First is about processes. Second, about environment. Third, about our own organization. So let's talk briefly about processes. We need to develop a circular and yet comprehensive process of business. This, of course, will include all the triple bottom line of all our businesses, namely social, economic, and environmental cycles. We need to start with first step by examining the triple bottom line impact on carbon emissions. And secondly, plan and design our businesses processes with an end in mind. If we have not done so before, now is the time to do it. And as our process begins, start to audit and account for embodied carbon in raw resources, account for energy efficiency, waste reduction, look at our logistics and transport efficiency, look at also our vendor and procurement. Because if we want to tackle all the three scope one, two, three of carbon emissions, we have to look at it holistically. If we can tackle those processes, the next most important part will be to look at human behavior modification. For processes to change, people must change. And therefore, we must look at ways of introducing culture of sustainability, ground-up initiatives, 
continual education and training, Internet of Things, and smart systems to help humans to adapt. Finally, in this circular process, all businesses should start to think about how to allow for disassembly, recycle, reuse, and upcycling. Now, on this note, I would like to just briefly talk about an excellent example of a circular company, and that is the company that I've come to be acquainted with, which is a carpet manufacturer called Interface. Started in 1973 by Ray Anderson, he was asked, what's your company doing in the environment? Ray then therefore aspired Interface to be the world's first environmentally sustainable company, and he started to impose goals and targets such as zero waste to landfill, zero fossil fuel energy used, zero processed water use, zero greenhouse gas emissions. By the year 2000s, they became the first commercial carpet to use recycled nylon, 100% recycled content vinyl backing layer, glue-free installation system. And by 2010, they desired to look at using recycled material to fabricate their carpet. It is a bold move to fundamentally address circularity by changing its complete business processes. Now, the next topic is about net zero environment. This is not strange to the World Green Building Council family. We are all familiar with building processes. Yet, in the creation of net zero building, we are still very far from achieving true net zero carbon building. I will just briefly talk about the five key components that every building needs to think about. One is about the use of solarization or alternative energy system to reduce consumption. A part of the building carbon emissions come from its choice of material. There is a need to look at alternative material that bring down carbon emissions. Next, a key part of energy consumption lies in the air conditioning system, whether it's in temperate zone or in tropical zone. There's a need to rethink the reduction of use of air conditioning to stratification and differentiation between different temperature zones and allow human beings to adapt to the different environment without drastically changing the temperature. Of course, rainwater harvesting is a must today. And finally, buildings do produce waste and there must be a desire to look at 100% waste recycling and on-site waste recovery. Here, I'd like to just briefly mention a very successful zero carbon building by B plus H and McKellen Saddle, which is the first zero carbon building in Canada. At 96,000 square feet, it contains many features. And the reason why I highlighted this building is because it is a building that is not only full of hardware to achieve net zero carbon status, but it is also a sustainability learning hub and a living lab. There is a need to avail such projects for many others to learn and to know how to achieve net zero status. We can't keep the secrets to ourselves. The next topic is about net zero organization. I once participated in a workshop in Rio de Janeiro with World GBC, learning about the levels of sustainability in businesses. Here are just a possible level of growth of companies starting from level one to level five. We know that many companies and businesses started with ground up initiatives where activities are organized at a rather ad hoc level and sometimes based on customers' feedback. Companies that harbors a greater sustainability desire and intention 
will start to use a committee, a sustainability committee, to steer its activity. As it becomes more and more professionalized and becomes part of the company corporate deliverables, sustainability departments are usually set up to organize effort with actual KPI and budgets. As we move higher up the level, of course, leadership of a company will take part actively in directing sustainability effort. And finally, when sustainability becomes part and parcel of an organization culture, then you don't really need to make it a plan anymore because everyone will know what to do and make sure that they achieve the greater goals of helping to achieve greater sustainability on this earth. Now here I will just cite a simple example of the Singapore company called City Development Limited, CDL, company that again I have uh, known for many years. It is ranked fifth in corporate Knights Index of the world's greenest firms. It also achieved many other accolades such as 42% reduction in carbon emissions intensity from 2007 levels. It achieved 114 green mark rated buildings that achieved more than $34 million in energy savings. But the most important part that differentiates this company from others is that its board of directors, its group CEO, took part actively in driving sustainability. And it is very much like a level one and level two company where leadership takes responsibility on sustainability and the sustainability culture permeates the whole organization. Finally, I want to talk about developing a net zero roadmap. The World Green Building Council is one organization that I enjoy working with a lot because it really demonstrates the way to develop a net zero roadmap. First of all, it's about building net zero people. And in order for an organization to be infused with a sustainability culture, it needs a sustainable workforce with a sustainable mindset. And here is an organization that brings together many countries with common agenda on advancing net zero to work together hand in hand without borders. And it is an amazing feat. Second area that we need to pay attention to is about net zero education. As I mentioned right from the start of this presentation, net zero is a subject that is new. It must be taught rapidly to demystify the understanding and increase adoption. The sooner we can help people understand and apply the knowledge, the faster net zero can spread. Finally, it is about net zero campaign. Unlike any other movement, Net Zero Movement does not have the luxury of time and requires rapid campaign to raise awareness. Again, I'm very proud of World Green Building Council that rolls out many campaigns that strikes at the heart of the issue and resonate with global audience. So the final question in summary is, is there hope for our Earth? The answer is a resounding yes. But we must act now and act fast. Organizations must transform rapidly. Even though you may not know too much about net zero, it's better that we all take one firm step at a time. And the next important thing is don't turn back. I believe that it is with such spirit and passion we can bring global warming down sooner than later. Even though we may not be certain that we can achieve all the lofty goals by 2030 or 2050, 
but we must take this no regret move of not U-turning but moving rapidly forward. I thank you for this time for me to speak on this topic that I'm very passionate about and I wish all of you a successful journey. Thank you. Good day everyone. My name is Marcus Tam from AGC, Asahi Glass Company, doing sales and marketing for Smart Glass products in Asia Pacific region. Today, I'm going to share with you on the topic of our products, Sign Ward, a building integrated photovoltaic, BIPV for clean energy generating plus solutions. In this topic, I'm going to share the benefits of having Sign Ward BIPV, how our range of BIPV we is able to achieve net zero energy and different applications being applied on the building. First, let's us all look at World Green Building Commitment. Taken from the website, the net zero carbon building commitment call on the buildings and construction sector to take actions to decarbonize the built environment, inspire others to take similar actions. They recognize leadership actions by businesses, organizations, cities, and governments to in tackling operational and reduce the impact of energy consumption. Carbon emanates from the sector. This requires deep collaborations across the entire chain, transforming in the way built things are designed, built, and occupied. The commitment requires that by 2030, existing buildings reduce their energy consumption and eliminate emissions as fast as practical, and also new build Developments and major renovations are to be built highly efficient, powered by renewables. Together with that, our Singapore energy story has been built over the last few years. Quote by the then Minister of Education, Mr. Lawrence Wong, says, depending on the results of our collective actions and that of the international community, Community, we will review our climate commitments and seek to achieve net zero emissions as soon as we can. With that in Singapore, our solar energy deployments were portrayed by 2025, and by 2030, energy, solar energy deployed will be five times that of today, powering about 350,000 households a year. Therefore, government, government has rolled out the SG Green Plan and support by sustainability growth sets by having categories like super low energy, zero energy, and even positive energy. Signwalk boosts environmental performance and efficiency rating consistent with nearly zero energy building and ZEB standards, all while delivering optimal thermal and acoustic comfort for occupants. Sunny Walk can contribute and achieve points on various building certifications such as LEEDS, BRIM, Green Building Index, etc. I will show you examples on this later in the presentation. So why is Sunny Walk? It's a building integrated photovoltaic, a product that integrates solar power generating products into the building. Look at the glass composition. It consists of two pieces of glass sandwiched between the solar cells within the layer on the both sides and become a laminated glass band. It can be highly customized and has a variety of applications like canopy, walkway, facade, fans, and skylight. Two photos examples you can see on the right uses it as fins and also as canopy. It also provides added benefits, protections against direct heat and glare, protections against the wind and the wind, protections against also harmful UV rays. It can also provide good thermal insulations, acoustic insulations, and also source for a good uh, solar energy. Let us look at the range of signing work BIPV products that AGC can offer. AGC have transparent range, uh, vision square and vision stripe that allows light to penetrate in and at the same time also harvest solar energy. Opaque solutions like stock reactive, art light active, and lacobelty active give you options with different colors and patterns without compromising on the aesthetic over the all view of the facade. You can see from the table on the characteristic applications and typical wall peak per meter square. Next, I will share with you more information on each of the product in the coming slides. First, you can see that is this uh, vision square product. On the right is a project reference. It is a classic 
uh, solutions that acts as a skylight canopy that provides some shadings while also allowing light to penetrate through. It is possible to process into a double glaze unit as a DGU or called IGU, insulated glass unit that uses mono, perk or bifacial cells. The beautiful point here is AGC can provide solutions that can be flexible in terms of the position of the cells, glass, especially the thickness of the glass and different specifications and requirements needed. We can also offer different shapes like rectangular, square, and even triangle shapes. Application-wise, this is ideal for noise, barriers, and also as second skin canopies or roof. This is a project called Hira Rebuilding. It's done in Lyon, France. Vision Square is used as uh, applications for the double skin to cover part of the facade. It is the first positive energy building in Europe that comprises of offices, retail, and apartments. As you can see on the picture of the right, the solar cells are installed on the top and below of the glass facade. However, it is not on the visual area. This is customized so to enable to people to enjoy view while also harvesting solar energy to offset the energy usage by the building. Another project in Japan, Tokyo University of Agriculture. Visual Square is used on the top of the building. This project uses bifacial cell so that it can harvest solar energy on both faces, and example, the east and the west facing. Furthermore, the cells, cells are placed on top of, on the bottom half of the panels, and on the top half, still able public to enjoy visual to the wonderful view of the city. This and our project uses Visual Square on the skylight of the train station in France. It actually uses different density of the solar cells on different parts and areas to create different amount of light penetrate through while also providing shadings to the building and environment. This ongoing project in Singapore at the new Pongo campus of Singapore Institute of Technology is scheduled to be the first in Southeast Asia to install urban multi-energy microgrid that will decentralize energy source and enable the efficiency use of local renewable energy sources with the aim of obtaining super low energy certifications. With a total area of 400 uh, square meters and system capacity of 57.7 kilowatt peak, AGC signing wall is to be installed at the skylight of the food court on the campus used as one of the energy source contributing to the reductions of the campus reliance on electricity from the main grid. This product is the Vision Square Vision Stripe. You can see on the right, it gives you high transparency using monocrystallized laser cut cells. It can apply on the visual area and looks like a bamboo blinds when viewed closely. However, from a distance away, you actually aren't able to see the stripes clearly. In Japan, it is called Sudari, which means uh, bamboo blinds. Power output is around 50 to 60 watt peak per meter square. If compared with Vision Square, it is considered low. However, the trade off is actually the high transparency that this can provide. So, how to actually apply efficiency given that the output is not so uh, much? One instance is this application's AGC Kachima plant a net zero energy building project completed in year 2018 December. In this project, Vision Stripe is used at the front side of the main office in order to realize a transparent look while maintaining high efficiency of the power generating. On the right, you can see a photo of the main production factory office building. On the left, you can see the energy consumptions by the building. You have the air conditioner, ventilations, lightings, hot water supply, and a power needed for the elevators. By using energy saving measures, such as low E double glazing unit coating glass, raw materials from insulations, it can reduce energy savings by 50.4%. However, the goal is to build and design a net zero energy building. This is where EGC signing or BIBB comes into play. Together with the rooftop PV it creates energy that goes beyond the requirement after carefully study on the aesthetic appeals points. 
here you can see some figures about what is actually included. You can see here the maximum capacity of using rooftop PV is 111.78 kilowatt, but it is just a big shot to be able to be a truly zero energy building. With the inclusion of vision stripe, which is called Sudare in Japan, on area about 130 meters square, we can achieve an additional of 13.4 kilowatt. We gives us 114% reductions in the actual energy consumption in the building alone. However, another important aspect is also able to seamlessly integrate BIPB on the facade of the building. So the transparency of BIPB is important, as you can see from the photo sticker on the inside and the outside of the building, day and night. Not only aesthetically, it also conforms to the building requirements and regulations in Japan. Another project reference is the Kirin Beer office in Yokohama, Japan. Similar applications, it is applied on the window areas where high transparency is appreciated. On top of the building, it also uses conventional solar to harvest solar energy. However, more energy is needed to generate for the building usage. You can see that from close up, it actually enables the person to enjoy the full view of the greenery outside. Next, we look at the optic solutions that EGC can offer. Stock ray additives gives a good uh, matching coating with EGC stock ray glass, having same external reflections with no impact on the architectural design. Other additive allows you to print specific color, customized patterns or image on that you want. A cobalt additive gives a uniform, smooth, glossy or matte finish based on the proven uniform paint. We share more details of these products. Stock ray additive is an optic spandrel of cladding glass solutions that embeds peak photovoltaic cells concealed behind a stock ray vision coating. It perfectly matches the AGC range of stock ray vision coating of the window, delivering aesthetic superior projects while ensuring optimum energy generation. A heat treated glass with black animal is used to enhance the color when it is viewed from the outside. This solution has very high efficiency with power output range 430 to 150 watt peak per meter square. This is a rendering image from glass visualizer software configurations. We use soft stop wheel additive installed on the spandrel area with stop wheel visual body at the visual area. Viewed from the front or from an angle, sunny or cloudy, you can see the color matching is almost the same, therefore doesn't compromise on the aesthetic view of the building. Another rendering image used stop wheel visual 52T on the visual area and stop wheel additive on the spandrel area. On visual aesthetic, it also provides an accident match with the visual area. Next is this uh, uplight additive. AGC incorporate with solar visual in Netherlands to bring this product to the customers. The digital print glass known as uplight and additive means energy generating. It is fully customized in terms of size, colors, and designs. It comes with three different types of density of print, optimal, medium, or basic. On the top or on the left bottom is the optimal that gives high power output. However, the color printing is more spaced out, thus the resolutions of the image is lesser. The basic on the right gives you a better resolutions, however, lesser power output compared with the optimal type. One project reference is the tall part at Belgium. At first look, you were thought that the light bulb design is just there to enhance the look of the building only. You will not know that it exact, actually also harvests energy and provides power to the building also. It seamlessly integrates to be part of the design of the building. Another reference is this Shell Technology Center in Netherlands. You can see from the eight different designs logos on the top of the building. It blends in with the building seamlessly. 
public without any knowledge will talk that it is just a logo or a design. However, it's also an energy generating display that also offset the energy use in the building. Laco Bell D Active is the last on our range of office solutions or products. It is a highly efficient product that gives an output of from the range of 100 to 160 watt peak per meter square. With a smooth uniform matte or glossy finish based on the proven uniform paint. Application wise, it can be installed at the cladding, spandrel, and also on the roof. This is one project reference in France. It is the world's first positive energy housing tower in Scotland. It used Laco Bell on the whole facade of the building. Another project in Belgium uses Laco Bell Black gloss on the side of the facade. You can see from the photo here, it is highly reflective and happens to capture the crowd uh, images while also harvesting solar energy. Another project uses Laco Bell Matte on Norway. Depending on the architects and owners' designs, intentions, and applications, we have a range of transparent and big solutions for you to apply on. Lastly, we are able to offer an all-round support and services to our customers, from design stage like simulations of cells, prototyping, all the way to energy study and technical services. We are able to assist architects and designers on feasibility studies, calculations to reach any required standards, facade integrations, and provide monitoring and commissioning to the complete BIPV system. With this, I end my presentations. Thank you for your time. And if you have any queries or like to have more information, feel free to contact me or you can send your questions to aap.smartglass.egc.com. Thank you.